Are you wondering what it takes to get accepted at Ivy League medical schools? If so, this video is for you. I'm going to cover admission statistics at Ivy League schools and tell you what you need to do to increase your chances of acceptance. For those of you that don't know me, hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure that you subscribe now on whatever social media channel you're watching this from so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video. As a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. Okay, let's get straight into some admission statistics at the seven Ivy League medical schools, beginning with Elpert Medical School at Brown University. So the average acceptance rate is 1.93. For in-state, the acceptance rate is 18%, and out-of-state, it's 1.7%. The average MCAT score is 516, and the average GPA is 3.83. And now 59% of all matriculants have science backgrounds. Next, we have Columbia University, the College of Physicians and Surgeons. So the average acceptance rate is 1.75%. In-state is 1.9%, which is the same as the out-of-state acceptance rate. The average MCAT score is 521, and the average GPA is 3.91, and 71% of all matriculants have science backgrounds. Moving on to Weill Cornell Medicine, the average acceptance rate is 1.7%, the in-state acceptance rate is 2.2%, with the out-of-state rate being 1.6%. The average MCAT score is 520 and the average GPA is 3.9 and 72% of matriculants have science majors. The fourth Ivy League medical school is the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth College. The average acceptance rate overall is 1.2%, 6.6% in-state and 1.1% out-of-state. The average MCAT score is 516, the average GPA is 3.78, and there's 63% of matriculants have science majors. Next is Harvard Medical School. So the average overall acceptance rate is 2.3%. It's 3.6% for in-state and 2.2% for out-of-state. Now the average MCAT score is 520 and the average GPA is 3.94. 69% of all matriculants have science majors. Then we have the Perlman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. So the overall acceptance rate is 2.4%, the in-state acceptance rate is 5.4%, and the out-of-state acceptance rate is 2.1%. The average MCAT score is 521, and the average accepted GPA is 3.93, and 69% of matriculants have science majors. And last but not least is Yale School of Medicine. So the average overall acceptance rate is 1.8%. It's 6.2% for in-state and 1.5% for out-of-state. The average MCAT is 521 and the average GPA is 3.9%. Now this is interesting. So the matriculants with science majors are only 1%. So that number is really interesting because if you notice with the other schools, the percentage of matriculants with science majors is much higher. So it just goes to show you that Yale obviously values students from a variety of different backgrounds. Okay, so now I wanna give you a few strategies to improve your chances of acceptance. The first one that I have for you is to improve your GPA and MCAT scores. Due to enormous competition, you must at least meet both the GPA and MCAT averages at the school to which you're applying. Even though most Ivy League members do not have a grade or score cutoff, your marks and test scores shouldn't be any less than the program's average if you want the best chance of getting accepted. If your GPA does not meet the average of the Ivy League school to which you're applying, then you have to improve your grades. If you're still a student, take the opportunity to retake the classes in which you did poorly. This strategy will also demonstrate your dedication for improvement. You can also organize your coursework by taking classes and disciplines that you know you're going to do well in. If you're no longer a student, you might want to enroll in a post-bachelorate program or work to complete more undergraduate courses. Strategy number two, impress with your extracurriculars. Your extracurriculars must include activities that would highlight your individuality and show your dedication and passion for a career in medicine. As always, the quality of your activities trumps the quantity. So make sure that you demonstrate a variety of extracurriculars with a substantial time commitment. Having just one extracurricular could hurt your chances of acceptance as it limits your experiences. According to the latest data, students who get accepted into Ivy League medical schools have incredibly impressive pre-medical experiences. More than 90% of these schools' matriculants had in-depth research and lab experience. Over 50% of Dartmouth's medical school matriculants had medical or clinical pay paid employment, and even though shadowing is not required but recommended, over 80% of students who were accepted by these schools had shadowing experience. 
A high percentile of matriculants also had other community engagement and volunteering experiences. So what does this mean for you? Try to gain research experience, clinical experience, shadowing experience, and volunteering experiences to really round out your application. Strategy number three is to create outstanding essays. The personal statement and your secondary essays for Ivy League medical schools must be outstanding. While it's true that many pre-med students have similar journeys, your personal statement delivery and content has to stand out. It can be difficult to organize all your hard work and accomplishments into a coherent story in the space provided by the AMCAS application. Personal statements are limited to 5,300 characters, including spaces. So it's important that you prioritize and choose three to four talking points for your personal statement. Remember that your essay needs to have a captivating first sentence as well as a memorable conclusion. And the last strategy, number four, that I have for you is to secure excellent letters of recommendation. According to the Ivy League Medical School's profiles, recommendation letters play a vital role in their decision-making process. This is why your reference letters must be stellar. You are encouraged to submit as many letters as are allowed. So for example, if the school you're applying to has a minimum of three letters and a maximum of six, aim to have more than three. Though most schools require letters from science and non-science faculty, letters from other suitable writers are also highly encouraged. Okay, so there you have it. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what it takes to get accepted at Ivy League medical schools. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions that I didn't cover in this video. Which Ivy League medical school do you want to apply to? Let me know in the comment section. Finally, if you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.